There is a reason. There is a plan. There is a purpose for you being here right now. It's not because, watch this, you've got to get past the Sunday stuff. You've got to get past the Sunday stuff. And no matter if it's Monday, I can worship the Lord. You know, so listen, if you can't worship Him on a Monday, you're going to have a hard time worshiping Him on Sunday. Okay? So my prayer today is that you realize that you're not here by an accident, that you're not here by uh, just because your alarm clock went off this morning. You say, well, Brian, that didn't work too good. I know, it don't work good for me either. But that you are here for a reason. The Bible says in Zephaniah, you don't have to turn here to Scripture, but I want to read it over you this morning. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, it says, God takes great delight, not just a delight, he said, I take great delight in you and rejoice over you with singing. Now think about this. Right now, while we're here, we just got through singing, but guess who we're singing to? God. He is singing over you and I right now. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is in heaven right now singing a blessing down over you and I. Boy, that just makes me happy this morning. The Bible also says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that God prays blessings. Now think about this. Blessings over you and I. Now think about this also in John 10.10. 10, the Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I'm so thankful it's got a comma in there. Because it says God came to give us life, and not just a good average little life, barely get by, but a life that is full and a life that is abundant. In other words, God just don't want you just to get by, barely meet your bills, and just get through life. And then you die, and you're a good little Christian, and you make it to heaven. God, watch me, God wants you and I to live on purpose while we're alive. You've got to be on purpose, okay? So another thing, listen to this. Now, in one translation in John 10, 10 says, to have life to the full, to the max, running over. Now, I know you don't hear this a lot of time, but I believe that God is for us. I believe that if God is for me, it don't matter who's against me, I'm going to win. Now, it's, you've got to get this word in your heart, okay? Because there's going to be some hard times, but with God with you, you'll make it. And I tell you, church, one fable lesson I wrote this down in my notes to give to you today. If I could sum up my life right here after 17 years of pastoring, here's a nugget I'd want to give you and I here today. If I'm going to win and you're going to win, if we're going to cross over the Jordan, if we're not going to be mediocrity and average Christians, watch this, you've got to understand to talk right. You've got to understand to talk God language. Because watch me, if, if whatever language you're speaking is going to attract two spirits, either a bad spirit or a good spirit. The church needs to realize who we're speaking to, who we are, and start speaking a good, positive uplifting language that everybody can connect with, okay? Here's what I wrote down here. Man, the, listen, the, the world knows everything is bad with them. People know what they do wrong. What the world needs to hear is Christians standing up and saying, you know what? God is still alive. God is still working. Church is still good. Are y'all alive today? Say amen. amen. Somebody give God praise in the house then. We need to learn to speak God language. And what is God right now? I thought about this. Right now, God is praying blessings over us. He's singing blessings over us. He's praying over us. God wants good things to happen to you and I. Your worst enemy is you. Watch this. Satan can't have you. You give Satan things that Satan don't even own. Think about that. You give Satan permission to come in and rob your joy. I just declare today the church needs to rise back up. See, negativity invites, it invites destruction. Think about this, into your life. When you're a negative, critical, complaining, oh, I don't even like saying those words. It gets me depressed even saying negative stuff. But if you are a negative, complaining spirit, it, what you're doing, you're inviting destruction into your life. And watch this, I wrote this down too. Negative words paralyze you and the ones around you. So if you're negative, if you're at Walmart and somebody's being negative, run! Get away from them! 
You say, Brian, I, that's rude. No, run! Run, get away from it. What if Joseph would have stayed in the kitchen with the woman trying to rape him? He said, no, 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 no. Can't touch this. No, I'm joking. He, you can't touch this. And he took off running. She grabbed his coat, Tommy, and there he was running. She's like, oh, and stripped his coat off of him. What she tried to do was rob his anointing. That coat had an anointing and presence of God. And what? Just complaining people try to rob your anointing. Complaining negative people, want, want, they don't want to be the only ones negative. They want everybody to join in on, in, in their conversation. Here, I want you guys to finish this sentence. Here's how negative Americans are. You ready? I want y'all to finish this, okay? Life just don't get any. What about this one? Everybody gets a break, but God blesses everybody, but oh, disease runs in my, so I'll probably end up dead, sick. That goes deeper than what I had. I was just going to say sick, but Americans are so good. Well, Granny had diabetes and Papa had diabetes, and little Louie had diabetes, and blessed be the name, I guess I'll get them too. What is wrong with us? I've got Jesus living in me, Dixie. I've got the King of kings, the Lord of lords living in me. I don't got time to talk negative. I got time to praise the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Somebody give him a shout in here today. Amen? Woo! He's so good. And I thought, about, I thought about the single people. Oh, the single ladies. No, I'm joking. Here's what single people say. I hear this all the time. They even make appointments to tell me this. I'll probably never get all the good men are. And to be honest with you, there's probably a married woman right now saying, here, take mine. He's not what I thought he would be. You know what I'm saying? I'm joking. But that's true. Man, we, we're, we're speaking, we're speaking Sibboleth. We're speaking a language that Satan connects with. Watch this. God's sitting there going, what? Are you kidding me? You're speaking more of his language than you are my language. And God is wanting to do a good work. So listen to me. We got we to gotta be... We got to be what God's called us to be. We got to start speaking a language over our children. Now, let me preach this for a moment. We got to start speaking life over your marriage. You got to start speaking a language over your children that God connects with, that rises up in their spirit. You got to start speaking a good God language. You got to quit saying, oh, you just like your daddy, and my God, you act like him, you look like him, good gracious, you're going to end up like him. Boy, that's a good language. Boy, I'm, I'm, I even get down even talking like that now. It, you know why? It don't register with my spirit. It don't register with my spirit. And I, it's sad. I never thought you'd have to come to church and say, guys, talk, talk like Jesus talked. I never thought you'd have to get up in front of a church and say, hey, don't smoke dope. How I many of you know if you smoke dope, you're going to lose some brain cells? How I many of you know if you drink alcohol, you're going to become an alcoholic eventually? Every person that I talk to in my office who's, who's got alcoholism, here's what they said, I never thought I would be there. Don't ever think in your flesh that you're going to conquer sin. But in your spirit, whatever spirit you feed is the spirit that's going to grow. So if you feed God's spirit, God language, guess what's going to happen to your spirit? It's going to be lifted up, and you're going to go from glory to glory, from amen to amen. From I'm telling you, you're going to, you're going to make things happen in Jesus' name. Amen? So I, I thought about what, it, what about today. I thought about how God, and listen, this is going to be, mess, mess me up. This sermon all week just messes me up. It's going to mess y'all up. I'm glad. I'm glad you're uncomfortable. I'm glad you're at church today, but I'm glad you're uncomfortable. I thought about how God had to shut people's mouths to bring about his plan. You say, Brian, does God really do that? Yeah. Joshua chapter 6, look in your Bibles real quick. How God had to shut people's mouths because of the negativity in their, in their spirit, in their soul. That they're sitting there speaking a death language. Well, it's always been like that. 
Well, I, don't, I just don't know about that. That's new. And I'm telling you what's wrong with churches today. The number one thing is they're speaking a dead language. They're speaking a language. And here's what they're doing. Y'all ready? Every time you speak a dead language, you're inviting the presence of evil in. Every time. I was just wondering how many times we not maybe verbally curse our children out, but we pray cursings over their life. When we sit there and you're a nobody, you're, you'll be like your daddy and you're like your mama and you're like this, that, and the other. I'm telling you, this is a word straight from heaven today and I want to give it to you. I'm excited about it. So I thought about how God had to shut people's mouths to bring about his plan. Look here in Joshua chapter 6, verse 10. If you're there, say amen. It says, but Joshua, verse 10, had commanded the people, do not, everybody say do not. What she said, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to what? Shout. Don't you say a word. Don't you raise your voice. Don't you do anything until God tells you to shout. And you know why I read one commentary and he, he said this and I thought it was so funny. God said for six days, six days, you do nothing but march. You do nothing but march. You march around the Jericho wall, and you, you march until I tell you to shout. And one commentary said these words. I thought it was funny. He said the reason why God had to tell his children Israel to be quiet, don't raise your voice, do nothing but march, because he knew they would complain. He knew they would start complaining in their spirits. And can't you hear them now? Oh, why, why, why? I love destiny, but that's her favorite word. Why, Daddy? Why, Daddy? Why? But, Daddy, you let Bubby do that. Daddy, I'm little. I'm the baby of the family. Why? Because I said so. Pretty simple. It's not for debate. And why do we think we got the power to debate God? When God says, be still, Elkhorn. And I don't want you to do nothing but march in my army. I don't want you to do nothing but just give me praise under your breath. Because see, if you can't praise him privately, you'll never praise him publicly. If there's a time in your life that you've got to walk around the wall, could you see them? Well, here we are Jews. Why don't we get the Gentiles to do it? It's hot. It's cold. I don't like this. God, who are you? I mean, we're Jews. We are the tribe. We're Jews. We're children of Israel. God, we're your chosen. And all you want us to do is march. And I started thinking, march, march. Well, I can just see us now marching around the wall. March, march, march. March, march. Come on. See, it's hard to shut up. But God, the Bible says in Psalms 46.10, be still, be still, be still, and know that I am God. There comes a time in your life if you can't take marching orders, you'll never go into the army. You'll never be able to do that. So I started thinking about, I love what happened on the seventh day. Here they were marching six days, six, six days. Lord, we don't want to give God two hours on Sunday. What if God said, Elkhorn, I want you to march for six days. Keep your mouth shut. I don't want you to talk. I don't want you to raise your voices. I don't want you to complain. All I'm asking you to do is march, march, march. If churches would be quiet just for a little bit and let God be the Lord of their house, I promise you if they just march in the Lord's army, he'll lead you to victory every single time. On the seventh day, I love, I love what God said. God says, I, I love this. Look here in verse 16. Joshua chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Shout. For the Lord has given you this city. After six days of marching, here they come on the seventh day, and God says, now that you did not talk, now that you did not raise your voice, he said one word, y'all ready? Here it is. Shout! Y'all missed it. Shout! Shout! Say Hallelujah! Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's exactly what happened. You say, Brian, that's weird. They thought so too. See, what we think, we got to quit reading the Bible as a fictional book. 
We got to quit reading the Bible as a fairy tale, a storybook, a nighttime story to read to your children. When you read the Bible to your kids, you say, honey, this literally, really happened. This is what God said. And this is what he will do for you. See, I'm just thinking a lot of times kids will do anything. I'm telling you, they got faith in them. Until we as parents start talking a lot of times. Now, honey, you might want to think about that. Don't do that. But, Mama, Jesus let Peter walk on water. All right, go ahead and try it. See, that's kind of daddy I am. Go ahead, go, Blake. Run. Jump in the water. See, because here's the thing. Why do we preach the Bible if we don't ever use it? Why in the world do you, why are you here today? Well, it's Sunday. You've got to get past that. If church has got to become a reality to you, that God will do exactly, 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 exactly what he said he would do. You say, Brian, do you really believe that? If I don't, I resign today as your pastor. God will do what he said he would do. He's the same yesterday, today. Somebody help me preach. And forevermore, God is God. He will do it every single time. Somebody praise him. If he's done it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. I can do all all, all, I'm going to say it again. I can do all, all, all things. Everything. I can walk on water. How about you? If I get put in a lion's den, God owns super glue. If I get put in a fiery furnace and they turn the heat up on me seven times, my God, who, who's that fourth person? His name is Jesus. He'll save me. He'll walk with me wherever I go. He's there. He's already paved the way for you and I. We got to get this word in our spirits. God spoke in my spirit Friday in, in my office, and I wrote three words down. I want to give them to you today. I don't take this lightly because one day, according to Hebrews 13, I will have to stand before the Lord and give an account of everything I preach to you. That's why, watch this, the Bible's not up for vote. It's not up for vote, guys. We don't have to vote. Is it would the Bible do what the Bible said it would do? Watch this. God don't really care about your opinion. It's not up for vote. God says, March. Hallelujah. March. March. You just march. And when I say shout, you shout, and the walls will come down, and you'll get the city. God just spoke into my spirit right now as I am preaching unto thee. If you'll just shout before you know how it works out, God will give you the keys to his city. That's a word from the Lord in here. And you can say, laugh at me all you want to, but I know when my daddy speaks. I know when he talks, and I can hear him. I'm telling you, God says, if you'll shout before you know how it works out, I'll give you the keys to my city. Somebody write that down because I want that word. I want to make that a proclamation in November. You shout before you know how it works out, and God will give you the keys to his city. Hallelujah. God wrote, he told me to write this down. He said the three words, and I still tremble when I, when I mention this. He said, make hell pay. Make hell pay. Make hell pay. Pay. And I'm going to say this again. Make hell pay for trying to rob your anointing. Make hell pay when it tries to come against you and rob you and make you sick and downcast and like a nobody, you make hell pay. Because God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God says, don't come against them because I be for them. God is for us. We are the head and we are not the tail. I don't care what any pastor's ever told you. God is for his church. He's for his people. He loves you and he's got a plan for you in this house today. Somebody give God a shout. Shout before you know how it works out. Shout before you even get your miracle. Shout before you even get your healing. And God will give you the keys. You say, Brian, you get tore up. I absolutely do because I believe what I preach. I believe I am highly convicted of this word. And I have learned as a pastor after preaching 17 years, when you get up and you spank people, that's the devil's language. When you speak death over people, that's the devil's language. You want to see a church bloom and blossom? 
You know why Elkhorn's doing what Elkhorn's doing? It is not because of the preaching. It is not because of the praise. It's because God, hallelujah, is in the house and souls are being saved. And God is the only one that can do what's happening in this house. I don't want it if it's not of God. I don't want it if it's not of God. I want to be in God's presence. I want to taste the glory of God. And I've got to have a word from the Lord. Make hell pay. You make hell pay when it comes against you. You rise up and you charge the gates of hell. You say, Brian, I don't have that. Quit saying that in the name of Jesus right now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want y'all to get this. I'm going to preach this until two things happen. Until God calls me somewhere else, which I hope he don't. Or number two, I go out in the rapture. And when we get to heaven, I'm going to look every one of you in your eyes and go, I told you so. I am. I'm going to stick my tongue out at you in heaven. And I'm going to say, I told you so. I told you God said that. I told you God before us. See, the problem with camels has been a problem with a small town. There's two things, pride and jealousy comes against people all the time. Pride and jealousy. All people say, what's going on in Elkhorn? I say, well, God's just here. It's a funny thing, boy. (laughs) I'll be good. Listen to this. I'm telling you, you make hell pay. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to die with my wife. You say, boy, you're awful cocky. No, I'm awful confident. Because I know what God put together, nobody can tear apart. Somebody help me preach in this house. I know that Elkhorn's going to make it, Brother Howard. Because God is number one in this house. And that's the way it's going to stay. If your pastor becomes number one, you better find another church. Woo! Stand up, Holy Ghost. Boy, the waters are being stared. Hallelujah. Don't ever follow a man. Don't ever, because a man will let you down every single time. But follow, hallelujah, the presence of God. And I'm telling you, where he goes, you can trust that. You can trust that. Hallelujah. I just love this. And this is the second thing I want to give you guys. In Luke chapter 1, we're talking about how God had to shut people's mouth to get his purpose done. He told the children of Israel, he said, you just march, don't say a word. He said, at the seventh day, he said, open your mouth and shout. He didn't say, give a great theological dialogue. He did not say, what college did you go to? He did not say, how many degrees you got hanging on your wall? He don't care about that. He said, you shout for what I've done. Hallelujah. What I'm going to do. Y'all feeling the Holy Ghost this morning? I'm telling you, God has a plan and God has a purpose. Shout in this house today. I'm telling you, we got to shout before we know how it works out. Luke chapter 1, verse 18 and 20. God, I, I tell you, the Lord birthed this in my spirit. And I come unglued Friday. Poor Ruth Ann probably thought a Pentecostal done went off in that Baptist office. I shouted. I thanked the Lord. I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't start complaining, God, we don't have this. And Lord, we've not built the church. Watch this. I, I, I'm going to say this and take me a long, it took me a long time just to be able to say this. I'm so glad we're growing. But I'm not worried about that building over there. Because if God is for that building, Travis, it took me a long time to be able to say this. God, I'm, I'm learning as I preach, as I teach, as the word fills me and I give it out, God is birthing something in my spirit. If God is for that, the money will come. The money will come. And I praise God for that because it set me free. Hallelujah. Just do what God tells you to do in your Jericho. Your walls will come down. You do what God tells you to do. Quit worrying about Martha and her beautiful Beulah and her four no more. Don't worry about anybody else. You clean your house. You sweep your floors. You take care of you. And I promise you that's a full-time job. Woo, preach that, preacher. Luke chapter 1, verse 18 through 20 says this. Well, listen to me. The angel what? Y'all ain't turned there, have you? All right, here, look. The angel answered, I am who? 
Now watch this. Let me get rid of this big old lie that's going around in church today. Y'all ready? God still speaks. And watch what this angel said. This angel said, hey, I am an angel. My name is Gabriel. How many of y'all are glad that right now God knows you by name? That God says, I know you, Troy. I know you, Brian. I know you, Tim. You are my child of the... Re I feel... Mm. He knows us by name. And watch this. He said, this angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I stand. See, I don't read this Bible and like, oh, geez. This Bible is real. This Bible is my lifeline. This, I put my life in this word. I stand on the authority of God this morning as a messenger straight from God. You may call me reverend, doctor, or whatever you want to call me. Hey, my name is Brian. I'm a child of the Most High God, and I can do all things through God because he said so. Woo! He said so. And if God said so, I know I can do it, Jenna. I just wonder where the water-walking disciples were at this morning. I just wonder where, where we're at. Because, see, I still believe. I'm so grateful. I still believe that if God wants a donkey to talk, it'll talk. I'm going to get a lot of emails on this one. I was doing a seminar one time. I said, if God can make an ass talk, how much more can you make us talk? Now, if you let that word get in your head and your flesh start rising up, that's what it's called in the King James Bible, if you're King, King James theologians. Well, all I read is the Bible. How come you skip over that word then? Oops. So you, I don't know if you like, ugh. Woo! I'm telling you. So listen to this. He said these words. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Watch this. If anybody from God ever comes to you and says, I, I got a bad report. I want to speak a prophecy over you that is negative and no good. You better run and run and run and run and run and run and run as hard and as fast as you can. Because why? God is a deliverer of good news and salvation and healing and deliverance. Somebody praise the Lord what he is. I come to give you good news. Oh, I preach myself happy. He said these words, good news is this. He said, uh, and watch this, he changes gears really quick, right? He says, and now, he said, I come to give you good news, but now, watch what he says, Bobby, you will be silent, uh-oh, and not able to speak until the day this happens because, look, look at the reason why, because you did not believe my words, which will come true in the proper time. See, let me give you a quick history right here. An angel told Zechariah, who was married to Elizabeth, he said, God sent me all the way from heaven down to tell you, Jimmy. Let's put Jimmy in there. That Allison is going to have a baby. Now, he ain't going to... Perfect example. Did you see the brother shaking it? Oh, no, he's not. Oh, no, he's not Jesus. Please, in the name of God, hallelujah. Lord, I rebuke that. That's exactly what Zechariah did. He started saying, there's no way possible. God, please. I'm old. I'm wrinkled. Lord, this just don't work at my age, my attitude. I can't take it. And all of a sudden, this angel said, you know what? You know what he did, Melinda? He smite. Zach's mouth for nine months. And all the women said. <laughs> oh, there'd be peace in the house. Nine months. Nine long, long, long months. Zach couldn't speak because he didn't believe the word of the Lord. I just wonder right now how many of you would be able to speak if God said, hey, I'm going to do this, and it's going to come to fruition in, in due time, I just, how many of you would sit there and go, uh -uh. not today, God. Not today. See, I learned something. 
about women who are pregnant. And thank God, I praise you, Lord, right now that I'm a man. Uh, because I wouldn't be a good woman. I'm telling you, those nine months are crucial. I found out they like everything going. At 2 o'clock in the morning, they'll want you to go Kroger's. They'll want you to do everything. And when they up in that delivery room, and that little football coming out, I'm telling you, they'll grab you by the nip of your neck and say, I'll kill you if you ever try to do this again. <laughs> they'll sit there and smack and scream and holler. But here's what the amazing thing about it is. When that little promise comes out, and all that pain that you went through, and all them hunger pains that you went through, and all those sleepless nights that you went through, all of a sudden, you say, aww. And all of a sudden, your husband, who you slapped in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you grab his neck again, you say, honey, you did well. It's amazing. See, what I've noticed is that you have to go through a little pain before you burst something good in your life. You'll have to go through some pain. Listen, if you're wanting to get married and you say, oh, praise God, we'll never fight, don't get married. I'm trying to give y'all some good counseling this morning. Y'all, we're going to have to leave it to Beaver Household, Ward in June. Well, you, talk, you come back after that first year and we do our, our counseling again. I've never had anybody walk in and say, my God, he is perfect. Never happened. Never will. I'm Ted, leave it to Beaver is not true. I know I just told y'all something. Y'all sitting there depressed now, but they're not true. It's not. It's not. So listen, here's what happened. Oh, Zach had lockjaw for nine months. Nine months. The Joker sat there. I mean, hey, this is true. Is this true? It's in the Bible. So watch this. I love this part. The man come to me. He said, hey, what are y'all going to name that baby? And Zechariah, he knew because the angel already told him, hey, it's going to be John the Baptist. He's going to be the forerunner of Christ. And all of a sudden, here Zach, Zach was. He wanted to say, I know. I know his name. Let me tell you, it's John the Baptist. But he couldn't talk. He couldn't speak. But he knew what God had told him. Same way today. We know what God has done for us. We know where God has brought us from. How come the church is not speaking up? How come the church is not preaching up? How come the church don't say, Hey, I know who I used to be. But I can declare today, I know what God has done for me. And this be the day the Lord has made. And I'll be glad. I'll rejoice. I know where God's brought me from. How many of y'all can testify to the goodness of God? Where God brought you from? Man, I'm telling you, that's the same thing that happened to Zach is the same thing that happened to the churches today. I love what old Zach did. He was sitting there going. That's when sign language come in play. Now here's what happened, really. He ran and got a tablet. He wrote down John. He turned it around. He spoke in tongues. I don't know what he did. The Bible says, Brenda, at that moment, his loose, his tongue got loosened. My God. The Bible says when he finally, when God says, now I can trust you with the word of God, I will loose your tongue and you will prophesy. You will have a prophetic word over this nation. And his name is John. See, what God is waiting for is for you. Can he trust you? With the way you talk right now. Can he trust you. With the way that you talk. Because listen. I just wonder again. God may have gave. I, I believe it's on my heart. That everybody here has got a gift. Everybody here is birthing something in your life. Everybody here has something to offer God back. 
And if you are not given what God deserves, you're no different from Zach. And I'm telling you, if we here right now, just room, there's room right here. If we will get serious about the Word of God and start opening our mouth and God loosening our tongue, Camelsville, Kentucky would never be the same in Jesus' name. Your workplace would never be the same in Jesus' name. I'm telling you the truth this morning. Everybody here is pregnant. Uh-oh. You say, Brian? Uh, it's a miracle. My husband's pregnant? Yep. Right now, every man in here is pregnant with Jesus Christ. There is a seed of hope in you right now. You are birthing something in your life right now. Whether it's negative or positive, something is coming through your mouth right now. Some of you may get your miracle in nine months. Some of you may get your miracle in five years. I don't know, but you are birthing something. Elkhorn Baptist Church, I prophetically say today, we are birthing something here at this church. Something is shifting. Something is happening. I wrote this down. <laughs> when, how can I say it's Holy Ghost? When you start speaking negative and complaining words, here's what you're doing. Write this down. You are whistling for Satan. Here, Satan, 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 I got, a, I got a negative word. It's like he's whistling for your old dog. And how many of you know when you start speaking that negative, complaining words, and you start going, here, Satan, 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 he'll come running every single time. When you start whistling and complaining about the bad things or whatever, I'm telling you, you might as well just do this. Walk outside and go, Satan, come here, boy. Woo, 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 woo. Whatever that is. Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. I told first service, Turtle Man 2 doesn't show back up. That's what you're doing. When negative words come out of your mouth, you're sitting there whistling for Satan. And I thought about one negative complaining word, guess what it done to the children of Israel? It made them circle the same old mountain. Watch this. For 40 years. Y'all listen to me very quick. I'm almost done. Praise team, y'all come. 40 years because of one negative word. 40 years, Chad. They walked around the same old mountain. And I guarantee you today that there's some people here right now that are living in the same old mountain, going around the same old mountain, the same old complaints, because why? You've got a complaining spirit in you, and I rebuke that by the authority of God today.